Question 1. Sam bought some boxes of cookies for $36 after a 25% discount. With the money he saved from the discount, he bought 4 more boxes at the same discounted price. What is the original price of one box of cookies? Let us first begin by changing the percentage to fraction. So for 25%, it is actually a quarter. Now let's read the first sentence again. Sam bought some boxes of cookies for $36 after a one quarter discount. Which means initially the boxes of cookies cost 4 units. And after the one unit discount, the boxes of cookies only cost 3 units. So 3 units is this $36. Let's write the step down. 3 units is equal to $36. Now, since the discount is worth 1 unit, so let's figure out how much that is worth. To find out what is 1 unit, which is the discount, we shall have $36 divided by 3 and we will get $12. So the discount is actually worth $12. With the money he saved, which is with the $12 from the discount, he can actually buy four more boxes at the same discounted price. Given that $12 buys you four more boxes, we can discover the discounted price. So let me write it down. This counted price of one box of cookies. Okay, so $12, 4 boxes, therefore, to figure out what is the cost of 1 box of cookies after discount. So the discounted price for 1 box of cookies is $3. Now, if you think about it, this box of cookies is actually after a 25% discount. Therefore, to find back the original price, the... Original price of one box of cookies. This is after 25%, right? So we will take the $3 divided by 75 to figure out what is 1%. After that, we times 100 to get the 100%, which is the original price. And that will give you $4 as the answer. Question 2. Elsa sold 15% of her candies on Monday. On Tuesday, she sold 188 more candies than on Monday. On Wednesday, she sold 127 candies and found out that she had 25% of her candies left. How many candies did she sell all together? Let's change all the percentage to fraction. 15%, which is 15 out of 100, and if we simplify, we will get 3 out of 20. And what about 25%? 25 out of 100, which is a quarter in its simplest form. But I'm going to change it to 5 out of 20 instead of a quarter. Later on, you will see why. Just take note that I'm trying to change to a common denominator, which is 20. Okay, so later on you will see why instead of a quarter, I choose to simplify it to 5 out of 20. So let's begin. Elsa sold 3 units out of the entire 20 units of her candies on Monday. So let me draw the model. On Monday, she sold, let's say, 3 units here. Alright. And on Tuesday, she sold 188 more candies. Then on Monday. So for Tuesday, we're gonna not only she sold this number but 188 more. So probably 188, we can write it as this. Next, on Wednesday, she sold 127 candies. Wednesday. 
127, probably it's this. And found out that she had 5 out of 20 of her candies left. Okay, so she had, let me probably write this, left. So she's left with 5 units out of the 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And given the denominator is 20 units, so the total here must be 20 units. Okay, so how many candies did she sell altogether? So essentially, they are trying to find out what is the total number of candies from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. From this model, you should be able to see very clearly, we have 3, 6, 9, plus the 2 more, 11 units. 11 units plus 188 plus 127 will give you 20 units. So, 188 plus 127 must be equal to the remaining 9 units. Hence our first step. 9 units is equal to 188 plus 127. And that will give you 315. 1 unit will be 315 divided by 9 to give you 35. So each unit here is 35, 35, 35, so on and so forth. Okay, maybe just let me write this down. So how many candies did she sell all together? We just need to figure out 6 units plus 188 plus 127. Then that will give us the answer. The final step. Number of candies she sold all together. So 35 times 6 plus 3, 1, 5. And that is 5, 2, 5. Question 3. Jane has a collection of coins and stamps. 30% of her collection are coins and the rest are stamps. If she were to collect an additional 40 stamps, 20% of her collection would be coins. How many coins were there? Essentially, the question is saying at the beginning, 30% of her collection are coins. But after adding 40 stamps, that percentage decreased to 20%. We must be mindful that the number of coins stays the same throughout the whole question, yet the percentage decreased. So probably the first thing that comes to your mind could be using ratio to solve. And what type of ratio question could this be? Is it the total stays the same or the difference stays the same or one remains unchanged. Okay, so let's start by constructing the ratio table. At the beginning, 30%, so let's change it to fraction 3 out of 10, after that, 1 fifth. Okay, so let's read it again. 3 tenths of a collection are coins. So out of the entire 10 units in her collection, 3 units belongs to coins. So let me write 3. And the balance, the remaining 7 units must be stamps. So the ratio 3 is to 7. Moving on, after receiving 40 stamps, so probably I can write it here, plus 40 stamps, what happens to the ratio? It became 1 is to 4 because the total is 5. So given that at the end, only 1 unit out of the 5 are coins, the remaining 4 units will be stamps. So 1 is to 4. However, as we mentioned earlier, the number of coins stays the same. So how can these 3 units and this 1 unit you know, be equal to each other? In model form, it's just saying that the 3 units here and the 1 unit here. Okay, so this is what it means. 3 and 1, they are actually the same. So how do I make them into the same number of units? I just need to cut. What happens to this 
ratio when I'm cutting. I'm actually multiplying this by 3 to get 3 is to 12. All right, so essentially when I'm multiplying the ratio by 3, I'm actually cutting this one gigantic box into three smaller parts such that they are the same. Okay, so let me erase, get it out of the way. All right, let's look at the stamps. Initially, seven units. After receiving 40 stamps, it became 12 units. So we can say that the increase of 5 units must be due to the 40 stamps. So step 1, 5 units is equal to 40 stamps. 1 unit will be 40 divided by 5 and that will give us 8. Every unit is 8 stamps. Next, how many coins were there? Well, 3 units of coins, isn't it? So number of coins there were, which is 8 times 3, 24. Question 4. Leon wanted to buy two shirts and three belts. The price of each belt was 25% less than the price of the shirt. The cost of all the items after a 20% discount was $136. What is the original price of a belt? Same thing, let's change the percentage. 25% will be a quarter. 20% will be one-fifth. Okay, so Leon wanted to buy two shirts and three belts. The price of each belt was a quarter less than the price of the shirt. The belt is one unit lesser than the shirt. All right, the price of each belt was one unit lesser. So the denominator, remember the denominator always uh, belongs to the item after, after the fraction. So the shirt is four units. Let me write it down. So for one shirt, it is actually four units and since the belt is one unit lesser a quarter lesser well the belt will be three quarter isn't it so three units let's look at the model again does it make sense this is the shirt and the belt it's a quarter a quarter lesser than the shirt so the belt will be three out of four Let's remember, all these prices are the original price. Okay, the a discount have not been applied yet. All right, so for two shirts and three belts, well, if you want, you can do the stacking method. So let's draw out. So maybe let me copy this, move it down. And I can copy this again, move it down. So this is two belts and I can have oh, three belts so sorry so here this is the entire thing all the things that Leon bought two shirts and three belts so in total how many units is there in total we have eight plus nine 17 units so 17 units remember this 17 units all these are the original price. So can we figure out what is the original price of all these items? The 17 units worth. Hence, 17 units is equal to, we shall take $136. Now, $136 represents 80% of the total cost. So we need to divide by 80. All right times 100 to find out the original price and you will get $170 from here we can find out what is one unit there will be let me change it 17 to get $10 so every unit here is 10 10 10 
So what is the original price of one belt? 30, isn't it? So let's write down the working. Original price of a belt. $10 for a unit. We're going to multiply it by 3 to get the answer. $30.